Das Baby Nomadin. Oh, that's cool. Subtitles. The waves are safe. Oh my gosh, your ass is so hot. Fuck you, sure. Fuck you.
This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. 427 is a bad birthday. 427's job was simple. By all the area code. desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at the desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Until one day. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Hi. What? I can't. I don't want to use the mouse. I want to use the controller. I'm trying to figure out the control. I love like those crows, crows. Again? Fuck, oh, I just did this. Oh. Ah! I just want to use a controller, even though it says I can't. Whatever.
Ugh. It like recognizes the input, but it won't let me play. Help me. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. That was quick. Alright, saying it's already the same thing. It's just to do on purpose. That's funny. I think he's already fucking with me. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on his Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push. Let me put her on the bouncer. And in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar <gasps> happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something what he up, Johnny? Quite forget. How's it going? He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years of- I didn't put my contacts in, I forgot. This, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. What? I got an achievement for that? <laughs> that looks pretty nice in this game. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Current time it is 18 o'clock error. Please reset. Did it say fuck? It does. Oh, fuel. That's a fuck. Who fart? Oh, they changed their mugs? That's hilarious. He used to say, I hate Mondays. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Very interesting. Who's calling me?
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided ah. to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Are you tired? You want your blanket? What me? That's a keyboard. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him, what he could not have known. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. My baby keeps touching my stuff, so I keep having to meet the lights so and forgive me. <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest. Uh, so he felt more baby, go away. To question the nature of his job. <laughs> when for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <coughs> the door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Fine, I'll go back. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. What? Am I stuck in the hallway now? What if I do this? 
We walk backwards. Interesting. That was a fucking trip. They like toyed with me. But of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. <laughs> the lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Stop trying to touch my keyboard. to the bottom of the mind control facility. Welcome! You see, back when the Stanley Parable first launched in 2013, getting to the bottom of the mind control facility was a bug that we simply didn't catch during development. And you all sent us lots of photos of it on Twitter and acted very superior about it. And you're all very, very clever. Good for you. Anyway, when it came time to update the game, we knew that we had to do something about this little goof of ours, so... Here you go. New content. You can call it the bottom of the mind control room ending, if that enhances your perception of the value of these updates. Isn't that what you crave? New content? Always more content, more content, more, 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 more. And I'm here to give it to you. I'm here to make it seem like we really covered every nook and cranny of the game with secrets and Easter eggs. How about this? We wrote a new piece of music just for this section. You won't hear it anywhere else in the game. It's a secret that's just for you. That's how special you are. We call this track, Good Job You've Made It to the Bottom of the Mind Control Facility. Well done. Good job. You did it. Good job. Good job, you made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. You jumped on the catwalk. You should have been careful. You should have been careful. It used to be a bug, but now it's an ending. Now it's an ending. I believe in you. I believe in your ability to cross this barrier and chase your dreams. Railings don't mean anything. Good job, you did it. Good, Good job, you did, did it. it. Good job, you did it. Good job, you did it. You did it. Good job, 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 you did it. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left.
Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. She's so mad. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Are you hungry? Don't be your some more. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? You hungry? Let me feed this baby real quick. Hold on. How much power I got going right now? Okay, I think I can do it. Let me feed the baby. Joe Biden straight up yesterday admitted that he sold state secrets. He did it on camera. He did it with the eyes of the world watching. You know, I've sold a lot of state secrets, Joe Biden said at a meeting at the White House with the cameras rolling. Very important. Now you're gonna hear a lot of uh, tape of Donald Trump today. Oh, Donald Trump showed classified documents. I have a lot to say on that matter. But you won't see this clip of Joe Biden straight up saying, yeah, you know what I didn't, you know what I did during the last little bit of uh, my 50 years in Washington, D.C.? Sold state secrets. Go. I was just thinking, uh, uh, the, anyway, I started off without you. And I sold a lot of state secrets and a lot of very important things that we shared. I sold a lot of state secrets, a lot of very important things. Joe Biden has dementia and he's just straight up saying it now. Joe Biden is just straight up telling you. He's looking down the barrel of the camera and saying, yo, you know what? I, I, I did. I sold a lot of state secrets. This is why they can't let us see the baby. Give him the guy. This is why the entire apparatus of the entire federal government is turned inward. 
to protect Joe Biden at every turn, not to investigate Joe Biden, but to cover up their investigations of Joe Biden. You're seeing that now on full display. Last night, and the only time we're going to cover this because the news is already out, but Donald Trump uh, had a tape of him uh, released talking about some type of uh, a warmongering plan that they had and, and planned to invade Iran. Okay, his generals had planned to invade Iran. Donald Trump didn't start any new wars. Donald Donald Trump ended wars, and they were so upset that he ended wars that they need to try and put Donald Trump in prison for not starting enough wars. So a, a couple of things here. One, the anti-war left is now angry that Donald Trump didn't start wars. That's what they're upset about. This is a clip of Donald Trump being like, hey, yo, they wanted to invade Iran. That's dumb. Mark Milley wanted to invade Iran. I mean, again, Donald Trump has every single right to take any single document that he wants as president. That is set precedent, okay? But more importantly, I think, is how the left is now trying to spin this into some type of Donald Trump bad narrative when they know that their guy did 10,000 degrees worse. Watch Jen Psaki try and uh, talk her way out of this one. Listen to this, like, hysterical slip of the tongue by Jen Psaki on MSNBC attempting to make Donald Trump orange man bad. Remember, orange hair good, orange hair good, orange skin bad. Jen, go. There's one president who values uh, our national security and protects document or protects mm -hmm. uh, our secrets. And there's another former president candidate who doesn't. But the, 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 there's one uh, uh, president who protects our documents. Ah, actually, no, Joe Biden doesn't protect our documents, you see, because Joe Biden has been hoarding documents for his family's enrichment since 1974. I made voluntarily, no one's had to threaten to do anything. Volunteering open every single aperture I have with the house, offices, everything for them to come and look and spend hours searching my home, I invited them. Nobody, and so, and the best of my knowledge, the kinds of things they picked up are things that from 1974 and stray papers. There may be something else I don't know. Oh, okay. So you've been doing this since 1974? This is your, this is your argument here, Joe Biden? Got it. Kenneth Vogel is a man at the New York Times who, that's right, correct? Yeah, New York Times, yeah. Ken Vogel, one of the chief investigators in the New York Times, has been tweeting nonstop to Hunter Biden. Uh-oh. Within 10 days of Hunter Biden's WhatsApp message to Chinese official, the Chinese energy company sent two payments totaling $5 million to an account for Hunter, according to records in the GOP investigation. That's not good. Uh-oh. 3,000 likes. 3,000 retweets. 5,000 likes. That's not good. Why is the New York Times covering the Biden corruption? It's not just the New York Times. In fact, there was a deluge of corporate press that is supposed to be owned by the Bidens covering the Biden crimes. Why? Because they're previewing impeachment. Journalists, they don't want to do this, but the journalistically, they have to. The impeachment is going to force their hands. Check out the supercut. And to add to all of that, the legal issues surrounding the president's son, Hunter, the latest of which is an accusation by two credible IRS whistleblowers claiming misconduct by the Department of Justice and the FBI during the investigation of Hunter Biden. A two whistleblowers from the IRS told lawmakers they recommended charging Hunter Biden with six felonies and five misdemeanors over his taxes. Instead, the plea deal includes two misdemeanors, one whistleblower. Uh, Gary Shapley says the DOJ gave Hunter Biden preferential treatment. You plan to? Can you get us that answer? And she said, Chuck, no, I don't plan to speak to him about this, and I don't plan to address this from the podium. Wow. And that's why you're having other folks in the White House, like from yeah. oversight and investigations, having to address this from a different way, but certainly not on camera and not at the podium, which in many ways creates more questions sure does. about this. Shapley also claimed there was a recovered 2017 WhatsApp message message from Hunter Biden apparently sent to a Chinese businessman over an outstanding payment stating, quote, I am sitting here with my father. We would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Hunter Biden allegedly texted, according to the transcript. If true, this would seem to contradict comments from President Biden that he was not involved in his son's business deals. 
Holy crap, guys. Holy smoly. Holy guacamole. We just got breaking news that there is actually a physical message from Donald Trump Jr. A physical message is broke. This is broke on CNN. A physical message from Donald Trump Jr. saying that he's sitting right next to Donald Trump, his father, and that they're about to sell. They're about to sell state secrets and American energy resources to the Communist Chinese Party. Ah, oh, we're doomed. 2024, we're doomed. We're doomed. What is that, ALX? What is that? What is that? Oh, my God. I... Correction. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's the Bidens who actually decided to sell state secrets to the Chinese. And we have the text messages. We have them here. So in case you flip open your phones on social media and hear the screaming and panic and terror of the Bidens, of the Biden regime media, talking about Donald Trump showing warmongering plans to go start a new war in the Middle East and not doing it, by the way, the left should be celebrating Donald Trump. They should be applauding Donald Trump for not starting a war with Iran, which would have been a bad, bad thing to do. What, what the hell happened to the left? Wait a second, so you have a president that didn't start a new war and now that's a bad thing? Yeah. Oh, and, and more, moreover, yeah, I didn't see any breathless coverage. I mean, we played a little bit there. We're glad that this is starting to break the narrative, but I didn't see any breathless coverage of this text message here before you. I am sitting here with my father. I've, I've read this so many times, I've memorized it. I'm sitting here with my father, says Hunter Biden to the chai -com. He's going to be really angry if you don't send us money. You better send us money. Otherwise, we are going to use all of his big business connections, all of his political connections, being a fossil and a barnacle in D.C., and we're going to come after you. And by the way, the reason you need to send us money is because we're trying to sell you American resources. We're trying to literally sell American natural gas to China. How do you like your gas prices? What are gas prices where you're at? It's about $3.50 in Tampa. So that's why they're upset. That's why they're scared. They know that there is so much demonstrable evidence against the Bidens. They will not be able to win an impeachment battle. They will not be able to, they might not be able to get a vote to actually convict in the Senate, okay? In the House, you'll impeach, you'll be able to impeach Joe Biden in the House, okay? You might not be able to get a vote to convict in the Senate because the Senate is controlled by Democrats. I mean, I just don't think so. You might have some people that like abstain, Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, some red state senators. But either way, you'll be able to win in the public arena because they know that the evidence is against the Bidens here. Joe Biden knows the evidence is against the Bidens. Joe Biden trapped at the White House yesterday by a reporter as he's being brushed out of the room. Got to go change his oops, I crap my pants. And a Fox reporter actually cornered him and said, hey, yo, do you still stand by the fact that you know nothing about your son's business dealings? I mean, we have the text messages. You old donkey. Here's what Joe Biden said. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, someone was looking for a break yesterday. Cringe Jean Pierre. Uh, this is our cringe alert for the day. Cringe Jean Pierre was saying that uh, we run the most transparent administration in American history. How does that make you feel? Week. I'm curious, though, in light of some of the recent legal controversy, if the president communicated to members of his family not to conduct business on White House grounds. Can you tell us uh, about, it, about any kinds of guardrails that are up? So, look, um, I'm going to be, again, very mindful because this is all connected uh, to, uh, uh, to a case that the DOJ is currently overseeing, so I'm not going to comment on that uh, specifically. But as you know, and we have uh, laid out uh, very early on in this administration, when it comes to ethics, when it comes to how uh, we all uh, uh, um, 
uh, kind of move about uh, and how we have we respect uh, clearly the government ethics here. Uh, this is a president. This is an administration has been incredibly transparent on that. Oh, man, dude, seriously, I like I'm telling you, imagine are you married? You got a significant other? You got a spouse, like a boyfriend, wife, whatever. What if every time that you ask them something, where'd all, where, uh, honey, wh where'd the $500 in our bank account go? Or whatever, you know? You asked your spouse something, and what if they looked, every time they tried to answer you, they, they, looked, at the, they looked at their shoes, or they looked down at something, and they're like, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's like, you know, we, we try our hardest here uh, to ensure uh, transparency. Um, and uh, ensure that 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 we do things right around here. What if your spouse gave you that response, right? Hey, honey, where all the money in our bank account go? We 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 are looking into it. Okay, we are looking into it, and they can't make eye contact with you. Does that seem like someone who's lying to you? Yeah, cringe. Pierre had a tough one yesterday. She was asked again about Merrick Garland, and of course, uh, we, 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 we are confident in this, uh, the eth ethics? Yeah, no, liars, poker face, go. Uh, Speaker McCarthy floated this idea of launching an impeachment inquiry targeting Attorney General Merrick Garland, and the focus here, according to the Speaker, would be Merrick Garland's weaponization of the DOJ. Well, what's your reaction to that idea? So, as you've heard me say repeatedly over and over again at this podium, is that the President respects uh, the, uh, the Department of Justice independence, uh, it res he respects the rule of law, and that is what you're going to see under this administration. So I'm not going to speak uh, uh, to uh, to any any anything uh, uh, that is uh, related to that. And it's unfortunate that congressional Republicans want to continue to focus on an issue that Americans are. That's not their priority. They want us to move in a bipartisan way. Is this your priority? Is this your priority, ladies and gentlemen? Do you care about these kind of things? When you see a clip like this one. The White House transcript says it. Read this. President Biden, okay. Anyway, I started off without you. I sold a lot of state secrets and a lot of very important things. Huh? Dude, this is what the guy said. This is the White House. This is according to WhiteHouse.gov. Joe Biden. So does this bother you a little bit? Joe Biden. Oops, I crapped my pants. Joe Biden got dementia, and now he's just straight up admitting to his crimes. He's done this before on camera. Son of a bitch, they fired the prosecutor. He's done this on camera before. Interesting thing about evil and the interesting thing about liars is that eventually they start to like actually break down and need to scream their crimes. They need to confess. And this is what's happening right now, diseased old Joe. He's like having, he's so broken down. He's like having to like scream his confessions in public. I know this is the third time we'll play this clip. It's only a five-second clip, but it's worth saying again. Joe Biden said, I sold a lot of state secrets on camera. And no one in the press will show you this clip. Watch. I was just thinking, uh, uh, the, anyway, I started off without you. And I sold a lot of... Now the monitors. 